This week on Prepping 2.0. This is the 2021 updated version of Food Preps 2.0. And the reason it's updated is quite a few things have changed out there in the world since we did this back in the day. When disaster strikes, will you be prepared? This is Prepping 2.0 with authors and prepping experts, Glenn Tate and Shelby Gallagher. Online at Prepping2-0.com. Get ready. Prepping 2.0 coming in 3, 2, 1. Welcome, everyone. This is Shelby Gallagher over here at Prepping 2.0, joined by my partner on this show and partner in life, Glenn Tate. Hello, hello. How's it going, Glenn? It's going really well. You know, we both, we were talking about this. We woke up this morning and we said, we're going to record a couple awesome shows on some good meat and potatoes issues, and we are fired up and ready to go. It feels good. It does. I'm excited, too. So, uh, quick thing, what, we want, what we're going to be talking about today, and we're going to tell you the topic, but we have some fun things to talk about you, talk with you as well, and it is our guide to food preps, updated for yes. 2021. Yes, but before we dive into that, let's uh, talk about a few items real quickly. So, one thing we always talk about is... Uh, who wishes that they had prepped? Bosnians. Bosnians. And there's a list of all the things they wish they had prepped for on our website at prepping2-0.com called the 100 things that go the quickest in a collapse. Uh, this week we are number 100, which is interesting because number 100 is goats and chickens. How apropos, or as the French say, appropriate. Appropriate. See what I did there? Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, goats and chickens. We don't do goats here at uh, the Glenn Gallagher, Glenn Take Shelby Gallagher compound, but nope. we do chickens, and we started doing them in 2019. And this is a great topic, goats and chickens, to highlight the fact that this is the 2021 updated version of Food Preps 2.0. And the reason it's updated is quite a few things have changed out there in the world since we did this Back in the day, episodes 44 and 46, back in August and September of 2019. And, for example, in 2019, we hadn't done chickens, or we'd only started, so now we actually know, so we can add more to it. So that was kind of cool. Lurkers come out of the shadows. What do I mean by that? Well, coming out of the shadows means you're a lurker. You listen to the regular show. And you wonder about the awesomeness that happens in the after show, which is available exclusively to Patreon supporters. So for two bucks a month, you get to come out of the shadows as a regular listener and you get the awesomeness of the after show and tons more stuff. And you can sign up at prepping2-0.com at the big orange button that says support us on Patreon. It's right there on the homepage, prepping2-0.com. Another great announcement, PAM Radio, P-A-M. Dash Radio, electronic flashcards for learning comms. You've heard about it. I don't need to keep repeating it. PAM-radio.com, a great way to learn comms. So one thing that we have uh, a little bit of time to talk about today, which we're excited for, is every now and then we get some listener feedback, some fan feedback from great folks who have been fans for a long time or they've just recently become fans. And honestly, what they send to us is touching. Makes our day every time we read it. And we do read them, by the way. So the first one is from somebody that sent me a message on Facebook. And he says... Uh, can you say thank you? Can you say thank you from a guy that was living in the Docker years? And I became, I'm going to start that one over again yeah. because this was a message from Facebook. And so it's kind of very text like, can you say thank you from a guy that was living in the Docker's years and became, I know that we are living in the 299 days of preparation. I've started working on getting healthy. In 2020, I have lost 94 pounds, gone from a 5XL shirt and 46-inch jeans to an XL and 34s. His and your, and when he says his, he means Glenn. Glenn and your books made it clear that I, that the one thing I was missing was being in shape. I'm a former Army Ranger. I store food, garden, can, reload ammo. I was doing it all, but I'd let my health go. Seriously, you two have made a large impact in my life, and thank you. And then I said, thank you back. And of course, he says, no, that you have made an impact in thousands of lives never stop being awesome so glenn stop being awesome no don't okay. stop that no blah, blah, blah. nope i need more coffee anyway so here's another one we did a recent show on relocating to a red state mm-hmm. and that hit a nice little nerve i think in some people and i feel like glenn you tell me everyone's moving or everyone's considering moving i think that the majority of serious preppers in blue states are considering absolutely relocating and we run into it all the time maybe it's on our mind because we're in the process ourselves, or as the canadians say the process the process. the process so yeah i think it's a it's a thing that is touching a lot of people 
So, and then this is, uh, so this person uh, emails uh, and said, my husband and I are moving to South Dakota and purchased there already. And let's just say to all of those out there, South Dakota is a horrible place. Oh, it's terrible. Please it's terrible. don't move there. Yeah. The Black Hills are oh, just gross. Gross. Um, the monuments and the national parks, just horrible. And the people are terrible. You'd be They're a lot happier nice. in Los Angeles yes. or Chicago. You'd so be... don't move to South Dakota because it's not like it's awesome. So any hoosers, yeah. my husband and I are moving to South Dakota and purchased there already. We spent three days there in a town called Hot Springs. We don't know anyone or have any jobs. However, the insanity here has made it worth the risk. We don't know where here is yet, but wait till you hear. I am mm-hmm, aware that the current situation leaves no state or human safe. However, residing in the heart of Antifa land is not only crazy, but it now feels almost anti-American. I live in the, she lives in Portland, and she says, I live in the closet for my safety in the Portland metro area. My circle of friends is now gone, and I rarely speak to anyone. My career is, was in Hollywood, so I get the double whammy of insanity. I am glad to find your podcast and surprised it is in the Pacific Northwest. Same thoughts on the left coast, question mark? Hmm. Well, there's no sanity on the left coast. Uh, Thanks. Keep up the good work. So this is a person that is hunkered down in Portland, and that's the reality of Portland. And so God bless her and her family, and and Godspeed on their move to such an awful place. Yeah, of course we're kidding. We love South Dakota. We think it's a complete hidden gem. And one thing I want to emphasize with this listener feedback is this should encourage you guys. Mm -hmm. This this person has no job. She and her husband, no job. They're moving to South Dakota, sight unseen. They went there for three days, found a house. I'm not suggesting everybody does that. There's probably some stuff in their lives that make this more possible than maybe for others. Which she acknowledges there's a risk with this. Yeah, but I mean, understand that people out there, be inspired. People out there are doing pretty hard stuff. To relocate, and you should take heart in that, and and realize it's doable. So, well, and yes. making the, and taking that, you know, finding what your tolerance for risk is, and making yep. those 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 key moves. So the next thing, and this is kind of a fun announcement for me. Um, I was just recently approved as a writer uh-huh. on a really awesome blog out there called the Victory Girls Blog, mm-hmm. and it's um, a collection of women writers that are, come from the conservative point of view the um, not all, I don't know that I don't know them that well I mean we're all spread out all over the United States but um, it's been a fun way that I can have kind of a, a political outlet much like you do with the cage and KHNC Weekly Show. So, mm-hmm. did my first uh, post recently. It was and great. It was fun. And, uh, yeah, so check it out. Victory Girls Blog is where I'm at. And I will note that uh, Patreons, there's a pastri- Patreon post available to you guys that has the link to Shelby's first blog piece. And as she writes more, we'll keep putting them up because it's fun to read. And it's also one of the cool things that Patreon members get. Yeah, very good. So um, we'd like to just jump in really quick and give a quick shout out to one of our awesome sponsors, Numana Foods. Great folks out there. And that's kind of key for what we're going to talk about today with food. Um, They deal in bulk freeze-dried food. Uh, So if you're looking for deep prep, something to put away a lot of food quickly and easily, uh, go check them out, Numana Foods. But as with all of our great sponsors, go to our website, prepping2-0.com. Click on Friends and Affiliates. You'll find Numana over there. Uh, What's really cool, use the coupon code PREP. Lowercase. Use the lowercase, we found out. And you'll get 10% off your entire order, which is great. That's awesome. Well, let's get to it. Um, We have a show that is, as I mentioned, sort of based on episodes 44 and 46, but it's an updated version. This is Food Preps 2.0. We're going to go through the outline of the book we have that we're not sure when it's going to get published. So please, I know it's terrible. We're we're in the middle of prepping. We've we've got a coup that took over this country. We, had a, we had a pandemic. We, yeah. So I don't know when it's going to get done, but it's going to get done. So understand that's where this well, is coming from. And let me just throw this out there. Uh, we we came up with kind of a plan a plan ish an mm-hmm. idea to to move this oh, thing we along. We have a work plan. It, when we say we don't know when it's coming out, that doesn't mean like it's a, a true mystery in the universe. That means 
she and I have a plan. We have a business plan. We have all kinds of different avenues for publishing this. We have a technology plan. We have a marketing plan. We have all these plans. We just don't know when it'll be finished. Exactly. Oh, it is not an abstract idea. No, 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 no. No, There's, no, no. no. There's like actual contracts and stuff. So this but the, is the wrench in the whole thing was a coup, a pandemic. Uh-huh. Lockdowns, mass. I mean, yeah. So we got we relocating. Got, yeah, my goodness. Yeah. So yes, but it will get done. So it'll be called something like Food Preps 2.0, and you'll hear more about it later. It'll probably, if I had to guess, and my track record with saying when Pam Radio was going to come out was off by about three years. Um, if we had to guess and dream, it would be uh, say November of 2021. That's our goal. So there you have it. So we're going to go through this. It, when we did it in episodes 44 and 46, which is now outdated, it was a huge hit. We had a lot of feedback saying, this is what we need. Some meat and potatoes, no semi pun intended, on hardcore prep issues. Shelby and I have covered some of the political things going on, and now they've played themselves out. And that's sort of done in the sense of kids cover your or parents cover your mm-hmm. children's ears. Get Are they good and covered? The Biden administration. Oh, goodness, I hate even saying that. But anyway, we're in the Biden administration. Okay, great. Now what do we do? You fill in the gaps in your preps. One of the biggest prepping items, and perhaps the biggest, is food. You're still going to need food for all the reasons you needed it previously. There are going to be disruptions. There are going to be shortages. There could be armed issues there could be violence there could be all these things if anything it's even more likely now so the reason to have food preps has not only not changed it's been enhanced so it still matters well and we talked about food preps many times throughout 2020 specifically had dan the the food executive on a couple times great shows all of those things that he talked about are still in play um and then we just say this about food too we talked to him recently he said nothing's really changed so he you know there's no reason to do another show but one of the things he said on the last show we talked about a reason why it it's a good idea to pr- still prep food is that upcoming inflation. Right. So I say that because right now you might be able to say, I know we can say it where we live. Oh, well, the shelves are kind of stocked and I can just kind of find what I need and things are pretty good and the prices haven't gone up. That's what's going to probably change. And he predicted that and I predicted, too, with what I'm seeing in market changes. Price of food, price of everything is going to skyrocket in the next year to two. So it is a good idea to prep for food now. And we'll get into it here in just a moment. Prep your food now because you're capturing the value, the lower price now, especially when you can find long term food that will save you money in a great way later. And may I add to that? Let's say you're in um, a marriage or other relationship like a lot of folks are that are listening. And one of you is more into prepping than the other one. That's actually pretty common. So here's how food inflation plays into your evil plan to provide for your family. You terrible person, you providing for your family. And that is this, sell it not as prepping to your spouse or whoever it may be, not as prepping. We're going to save food. Everything we're going to talk about for the next two episodes about food preps 2.0 Everything is reasonable, it is achievable, it is doable economically, and you're going to save money. And so sell it that way if that's what it takes. And we've done other episodes about reluctant spouses and stuff. We're not going to go into that, but I just want to highlight the fact that you as the prepper, perhaps in this relationship, have the unique advantage right now with food inflation starting. You've already noticed it. It's going to get worse. You have a great selling point, for lack of a better term. And so and utilize it, right? Right. So first part. Oh, you were going to say right. something. No, no, no. I'm going to ju- one of the we've talked about several reasons why to store up food. Another one that kind of the basic reasons to store up food and why when, as you store up food, you want to calculate. And there's lots of calculators out there on the on the Internet and in search engines how to figure out enough food to store for you and your family, you and your Mutual assistance your group. Mutual, whoever it is that you are partnering up with or in your family to feed. Uh, enough to feed your family, mutual assistance group, charity. It's good to have a little yeah. extra in case you need to, like, uh, for charity reasons, for getting the, in the good graces of neighbors or all kinds or, or, of reasons. And this is kind of, you know, less uh, moral, perhaps, than other reasons. It kind of falls under the charity banner, and that would be, 
have some extra food to hand out when people come around maybe and they want food, you can give them a little food and maybe they go away. That in and of itself comes with risks and that's a whole different topic. But having extra food to give away, no matter what your motivation is, whether it's good heartedness or making people go away. It's there's good to n- have no it. There's no downside, right? What the, about barter? Talk about barter. Bartering is so important, especially when the dollar and the value of money uh, it, it loses its value. And we're, you know, right now, government is just handing out money like it's candy. So it's going to start losing its value even more. And that's where all the inflation, all of those uh, market forces uh, forces come in and make it things that much more expensive so it's much more easier to barter hey i'll split that cow with you and i'll do this for you and you can do a lot of bartering uh you can you, i can trade eggs for i or chickens for i can trade you know packages of powdered milk for diaper you know there's all kinds of great ways to barter and that's i mean those are examples but the 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 examples are unlimited. They are unlimited. You can also barter for labor. Here's another yes. reason to have more food than you think you might need. Or Actually, the, the topic is why store up food. And so here's the last one on our list, and that is you can buy security. And what do you mean? What do I mean by that? Let's say you're not um, a tactical person. Let's say you don't have a bunch of airborne rangers on your uh, mutual assistance group, all these kinds of things. You can provided these security people are decent human beings and and they're not, you know, bad guys, uh, bad really. guys. Yeah. You can feed them in exchange for getting security and it may not just be you, it may not be that you adopt a squad of rangers. That's kind of artificial, but what I'm talking about is you and other people in your area, in your neighborhood, your mutual assistance group, whatever it may be, pool your food and you basically hire people to protect you because you feed them and they protect you. Uh, it's illustrated quite a bit in the 299 Days books with the meal cards that at Pierce Point and all of that. But don't discount that buying security. Don't discount that as a reason to store up food because it's a great way to fill in a prepping gap if you are, say, an older person or you have some physical limitations or for whatever reason, maybe you live in a blue state, you can't have real guns, all those kinds of things. If you've got a security gap, preparing by storing food may be the solution to that security gap. So speaking of security, I want to do a quick mention of one of our great sponsors, EMP Shield. They have great devices that can connect to your devices, basically your car or your home, to protect it from an, an EMP or a coronal mass ejection. Yay! I did it right. CME, yes, uh, CME. exactly right. And um, great folks over there. Uh, you can, again, check them out at our website at prepping2-0.com under Friends and Affiliates. What's really cool, if you use the coupon code PREPPING2.0, you get 50 bucks off your yeah. order, which is awesome. Each device. Each device, which yeah. is amazing. That so is I encourage good. you to check that out. What You wanted to talk about something yeah, else, Oakland. Another thing in sort of our introductory phase is we're getting our minds, we're helping you get your minds around the, the food preps issue. Another point that needs to be made is that one size does not fit all. If you're in an urban, suburban, rural setting, if you're rich or if you're poor, you're going to have different focuses, different needs, and different things are going to apply. So please don't hear what we're saying as some sort of indicator that we think one size fits all and that you've got you know, a hundred acre ranch in Idaho and you've got 50 chickens and a hundred cows and and you don't have to uh, have a perfect setup in order to do very, very well by food preps. If anything, I want to flip the coin on that because I do think that there is a danger that some danger, there's a caution, I should say, probably of people who are in the prepping world going, oh, I can't prep because I live in this city in a small, tiny apartment. I can't prep because I live in an apartment. No, not take, true. Not true at all. Take these Fake principles, news. take these principles, and apply them to your situation. We just had a message recently from one of our fans who lives in an apartment mm-hmm. and is raising rabbits and harvesting them. Yeah, in his apartment, he sent us a picture of him teaching his daughter how to how do to it. do it above their sink. 
Yeah. In their, in their apartment. And he's got his comp set up that nobody knows about because he set him up in the middle of the night. I mean, you can do some pretty creative things in your situation. So we encourage that creativity. Yeah. And you just covered the urban setting, yes. uh, the apartment setting. There's the suburban setting, which may be different in that you may have a little bit more space. You may have a little bit more property you may have uh, a shed or two that may be common in a suburban setting and go ahead and utilize it and once again don't don't fix your sights on perfection and say if it can't be perfect I'm not even going to try I'm limited because I have a postage size yard nope you're what you have is a postage stamp size yard so now utilize every inch of it and make it work for you and the same principle applies to if you live in a rural setting you've probably got more opportunities in a variety of ways you might be able to raise chickens for example you may have more storage space and all that's good i mean in general the more rural you are the better off you are in this setting but that doesn't mean there's only one size that fits all and another factor is whether you have money or not even if you are poor and oh i should back up if you have a ton of money then this is way easier let's be honest but if you don't have a ton of money it's still doable shelby's books covered that in great detail Mm -hmm. based on her real life experience 25 cent barbecue sauces if you've read a great state the three book series you know all about that 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 example in those books was based on a true story yeah yeah (laughs) exactly Well, let's see. Um, The scope of what the book will be at will be just very brief on that. We're just going to give an overview level only. And that is true of these two episodes Mm -hmm. that you're going to be hearing. We're going to give you an overview uh, because it's not possible to do a how to on every single topic. We trust you, listener. You're smart. You're resourceful. You're you're energetic. You're going to learn things on your own. And so we don't have to spoon feed you. The details in the book will be elsewhere. Um, one of the versions of the book will have links to YouTube channels and all of that other stuff. It'll be all the stuff you need, much like the Pam Radio Cards has all the information that you actually need. None of the stuff you don't need. But we're not going to try to give um, in two hours a tutorial on, on how to skin a rabbit. And it's kind of hard with no visual, too. It's like, well, there's this one thing and, and you put the knife this one place. It just wouldn't work. So nope. this is an overview and details are elsewhere. So take us out, Shelby. So, yeah, um, want to just let you know we're here to help you plan out your system that works for you. But the other key thing, and I think this is really good as we reflect back as the first time we did this show and covered this topic, learn from our mistakes. Yeah. We put together our current situation in a pretty short amount of time and, and flubbed a few things along the way. And uh, we're able to recover from that. But on the other hand, we can, the next time if we start all over again, we know what we're going to be doing. Chickens is a good example of that. So, um, so if you've started your system, you'll learn ways from us on how to, to refine re- it. How to refine it, and we've learned from others how to refine our system. So, and so as I get ready to break, take us to a break here, uh, Prepping 2.0, our approach to help you with your food preps is one: bring in new technology. Yeah, there's a lot it's of evolving that. all the time. Lower your costs, because this is only going to get more expensive the further we go. And there are things coming out technology-wise that uh, are cheaper and more efficient. So lower costs, as as things evolve, costs go down. So, and then one more thing is things we've learned and we want to pass on to you. That's what this is all about. That's what these episodes are about, and that's what that book is going to be about. So before we go into the break... When we come back on the other side, we're going to talk to you about how to plan your system. Yeah. We've told you lots of reasons why, lots of updates that we have for you. But now we're going to talk about, on the other side of the break, planning your food prep system. Folks, don't go away. More of Prepping 2.0 with authors Glenn Tate and Shelby Gallagher is coming right up. Hear all our previous shows free online at prepping2-0.com. Shelby Gallagher here. We found that you need to layer your food preps. Yeah, this is Glenn Tate here. A lot of times the hardest part of layering is the long-term foods. We love new mana foods, which have a 25-year shelf life and are non-GMO. Also, organic meals are available. New mana comes in family-style portions and in bulk. This is not backpacking food. It's family meals that last for at least 25 years. The perfect freeze-dried part of your food layering. You can get a sample of Numana meals for $19.95 and see for yourself. You will be amazed. 
Prepping 2.0 listeners get a 10% discount by entering the code PREP. Go to newmana.com or click the link on the Prepping 2.0 website. Give it a try. Newmana.com. That is N U M A N N A.com. Abe Lincoln here. In 1773, patriots broke the chains of British tyranny by throwing tea into Boston Harbor. On that day, Americans began drinking coffee. We celebrate that event daily here at Minutemen Coffee. All men are created equal. (laughs) Coffee is not. Minutemen Coffee is roasted to perfection in small batches. Old, smooth, and never bitter. Shipped to you fresh daily. Whole bean, ground, or our patented pods. www.minutemencoffee.com PrepperNet, where preppers unite. Looking to meet other like-minded people in your area? Looking to start your own prepper group? Already have a group? Join PrepperNet.com. PrepperNet has gathered the biggest names in the industry to help unite preppers everywhere. Join John Jacob Schmidt, Scott Hunt, Dr. Bones and Nurse Amy, Glenn Tate, Shelby Gallagher, Charlie Hogwood, Samuel Culper, Survivor Jane, Rick Austin, Franklin Horton, Ryan Mitchell, and Brian Duff. Our team is united. Check us out at PrepperNet. Dot com. PrepperNet, where preppers unite. PrepperNet.com. When the grid goes down, darkness will descend fast. Used to be there was nothing you could do about an EMP, electromagnetic pulse, or CME, coronal mass ejection. Now you can protect your electronics, protect your family, thanks to EMP Shield. EMP Shield invented a simple to install device that prevents whatever's connected to it from frying in an EMP or a CME, and it costs just a few hundred dollars. EMP Shield has been tested by independent laboratories and passed muster with the government, which has ordered lots of them. Google EMP Shield and see for yourself. And save some money. Get a $50 discount per device. Go to prepping2-o.com. Click on the Friends and Affiliates page, then click on the EMP Shield logo. At checkout, use coupon code PREPPING2.0. It's all one word. Prepping 2.0 is about that next level of prepping. One of the key 2.0 items to have is bulletproof body armor plates. I used to think body armor was too tactical for a regular guy like me, but it isn't. Give yourself, your family, and your team an unfair advantage when bullets are flying. Body armor used to be expensive and hard to get. Not anymore. KD Armor, and that stands for come and take it, makes solid and affordable body armor for normal people. Get body armor while you can. The clowns in Congress are trying to prohibit future sales. KD Armor is the place to get it. C-A-T-I armor.com. Prepping 2.0 listeners get a 10% discount when you use the coupon code GRANT. Now, more of Prepping 2.0 with authors Glenn Tate and Shelby Gallagher. Welcome back, everyone. This is Shelby Gallagher over here at Prepping 2.0. We just talked about why you should prep, especially food preps. Now we're going to talk about planning your food food prep system. Yeah, here's what we're going to cover. And it's a holistic... Oh, my goodness. It's a holistic system. You have to view this as a system. It can't be, I'm going to go buy spam and that's it. There, th- you, Number one, you should be doing that. But number two, that is one of five or six steps. First step, here's what we'll be covering storage planning where are you going to put this stuff how are you going to store it how are you going to you know retrieve it food selection criteria here's a key thing nobody ever seems to talk about in the prepping food topic and that is what kind of food should you be getting it's not as simple as you think um, we're going to be covering our favorite thing of all time layering yes layering applies to food preps applies to all prepping but what layering means and we'll talk about it more but just to give you an idea of the term we have so many new listeners every single show sometimes we use a term and we assume everybody's familiar with it and they're not so layering and that is having different kinds of food preps uh, layering them having some that are expensive and easy to prepare some that are less expensive and maybe store longer and some other things that are maybe inexpensive and they store for a long time or a short time. And you start taking all these different pros and cons of each of these kinds of foods and you bundle them together and you're always going to have something that works. You're going to be able to handle any situation. If you have to store stuff for 25 years, you got that handled. If you need MREs out in the field because you're out patrolling because bad guys are trying to steal your stuff, you got that covered and everything in between. So layering is a huge thing. We're going to talk about preservation methods, and that'll probably be the heart of the book when you get down to it, because there's a lot of detail to that. And there's a lot of new technology 
in in that as well, which is exciting in the whole food prep world. Yeah. And we're also going to talk about what we term non-commercial food sources. And that could be anything from chickens, goats, hunting, fishing, gardening. Obviously, gardening is huge. Stuff you can't buy at the store. So we're going to lump that together as non-commercial food sources. And then the last thing that we're going to talk about is something that, once again, I don't see covered really in the prepping world. And that is how to prepare food in a collapse situation if there's disruptions in utilities if there is a without rule of law situation and you have a campfire and smoke and people smell your food and that's a problem because motorcycle gangs want to steal your stuff all of these things so it isn't just having food it's figuring out how to eat it because when you get down to it that's what that that's what matters is eating not well, having and what was really kind of exciting or kind of fun to watch during 2020 is that as the general public was feeling kind of the collapse of the the food industry world. Suddenly, you couldn't find chicks at the local farm store. Uh-huh. You couldn't and buy she means seeds. Small chickens. I not mean the baby chickens. Females. Uh, you can find seeds. Uh, you couldn't find some gardening supplies. All of these things suddenly had a huge backlog mm. in their supply because I. That's what was I think kind of the learning curve is that 2020 specifically all the pandemic shutdowns and limitations really gave us a co- a, a real quick Look. quiz. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because it is not a full, it was not, and it still isn't, although it's a slow collapse. It was, but it gave us a really good pop quiz, which was the best way to say it, I think. And it's another example of why planning matters. Yes. Because oh, gosh, if you're yes. like everybody else and you're running out and buying chicks and chicken coops and chicken feed and it's all gone, by definition, you're too late because yes. everybody else beat you to it. And so that's what this planning is involved with it. Um, so let's jump into this sure. storage planning. The first topic, do it now. It affects everything. You'll notice there's a chronology to this. We start off by like planning your your food preps and, and your storage because so many things depend on you having a good thought out plan. So the key question, the first question is always how much can you store? Now your situation is going to change. You may be in an apartment. You may be on a ranch or somewhere in between. So you need to have an idea about how much you can store because that's going to affect how much stuff you get and how much stuff you can keep there. And I cannot stress this enough. We learned a lot from this ourselves because that we were doing that in 2019. We specifically acquired a shed. Not a small one either. Not a small one. And we... Organize that and stack that thing up with the 28 gallon. How big are they? These are the Costco. They also have at Home Depot. 27 gallon black tubs with the yellow lids. Amazing. We're going to talk about that in some detail. But we we started measuring. We did math. And and as you know, me doing math is painful. You can see smoke come out of my ears. It's very, very unpleasant to watch. But this was a great example of the layering. We, We planned it out. We got the tubs. We got the shed. We... And we stored, and we'll talk about this later on, and we organized it in a, in an inventory system. So that's just, that's let, you what know, we're talking it's not about just here. let's go buy, sh- sh- uh, you know, a bunch of tubs and fill them up and, and shove them in the basement. No, organize it so that when, you know, st- something really happens, I can quickly, and it happened to me actually recently, I needed flour and I didn't want to go to the store that's, you know, a half an hour away in the middle of the holiday season. I looked on my inventory list and I went out and got myself some flour. Yes. Exactly. Another item, another topic for planning your storage is often overlooked and is incredibly important. That's temperature control. This will obviously vary on the climate you live in. You have to consider this. And sometimes people don't want to consider this because they realize that in order to store a lot of food, They may have to spend some money on heating or cooling, depending on or both, really, theoretically. But you need to you need to consider it because it is a big factor. Obviously, the warmer things are, um, the the quicker they degrade Um, MREs, the difference in in how long they last uh, based on the ambient air temperature is shocking. It is absolutely shocking. On the flip side... Too cold is a problem, too. Because water expands when it freezes, and you can start cracking cans of things and other things. So you have to consider uh, temperature control. Another factor 
that often goes unstated is stealth. You can't have a, a big building that says prepping food kept here. You have to be stealthy. This is especially true in the suburbs. Yes. In in urban areas, you may not have the space to even be stealthy, so that may not be an issue. But in the suburbs and even in rural areas, you have to think about stealth. Our food storage shed looks like a normal shed because it is. And if you somehow saw it with the door open, you'd see a riding lawnmower in there. And that's about it. So you have to consider stealth because nothing says come raid me like a big old obvious food storage thing. Another consideration people need to think about, and they may not, um, because Shelby and I have been through this and made a bunch of mistakes, and so you can learn from our mistakes, but something to consider is off-site storage. But I want all my stuff with me because I don't want to have to travel and go get it. Valid. Valid. But when you're talking about storing the amount of food that you really need, and we didn't go into the numbers, but when you go onto those websites and those calculators that Shelby was mentioning, you're going to need a lot of space. And here's the cool thing about off-site storage that, again, doesn't get the attention that it deserves, and that is scalability. You can start small, get the food that you can store in the place you have. Then maybe you get your own shed and you put some more food in there. That's scalable. Scalable step number three is maybe you get off-site, off-site storage somewhere. See how this keeps building out and and. It's paced, it's pay as you go, it's all very reasonable. It also diversifies your supply. Yeah. Let's just say uh, here in where we live in Western Washington, uh, felt like Western Washington was on fire this yeah. last fall. If we had been able to diversify, and you know, you and you saw the tragic people losing their entire oh, properties yeah. to fire, if they had diversified. You know what I mean? So it makes it so that you may lose something here, but you, because of the, the location, some of your supplies may be, you know, retained, which is great. So don't think of it necessarily as a bad thing. Oh my gosh, I've got to, you know, rent something from some, whatever. It can be a plus though, too. Eggs in one basket. Yes. Another thing when it comes to offsite storage, like a rental unit, realize most rental units have a policy that you can't store food there. So um, don't get caught. Um, bring it in in tubs. Uh, don't walk in with grocery sacks because they have surveillance cameras. Good. Well, and that's a good do. use number 10 tin cans because they're trying yeah. what they're trying to do is cut down on rodents. And if you use cans, if you use things that are sealed in metal, I mean, you're I, I, I'm sure it's happened out there somewhere where a rat has chewed through a can. It is very rare. So there you go. There And, and another thing, uh, when it comes to offsite storage, we've talked about rental units. Here's something else. If you have a bug out location, you can use your bug out location to for, bug out to to store food. You can have a pre position there. We don't highlight that much because you guys already thought of that. You don't need to listen to us to think, oh, if I have a bug out location, maybe I ought to have some food there. You already knew that. So let me jump in here. Speaking of bug out locations, yes. one of our great new sponsors, Jared Savick. He is a realtor in the Kalispell area, as well as a fellow prepper. He was recently a guest on our show. He and his wife are preppers themselves, and they have a good idea of what, a, what makes a good prepper property, speaking of. Whether you want turnkey or to build your own retreat, they have properties in town in Kalispell, out of town, and way out of town. Uh, listeners um, can call or text Jared by checking out him his and his wife, let me get my English straight there, at their website, Seas, I'm going to say it and then give you a qualifier, Seas the Day Montana, so it's Seas the Day MT.com, or just Google it, I'm sorry, we don't use that word. No, we duck, duck, go it. We duck, duck, go it, or we put it in our search engine, um, and you can find out how to reach them there. Great folks, great folks on helping other preppers find great properties that fit their needs, and we appreciate them helping us out. Yeah, and Jared is not limited to just Kalispell. Yes. So there are other parts of Montana, so consider that. And he was a great guest. We're turning now to the topic of um, planning and storage. When it comes to off-site storage, one of the natural things to think about is how do you transport food? So let's say you have your the place you live and you have a shed and you have a rental unit. You have to think about transporting that stuff. 
Um, in normal times, it's not a problem. You do a car load at a time or a truck load at a time. By the way, don't let anybody see you moving food because they're going to follow you. That's, and, and that's take where your tubs stuff. are handy because people use oh, tubs yeah. for stuff all the time. It doesn't set off any alarms or anything. But yeah, transporting food, you might think about things. We covered this in another show in more detail, so we will refer you to that. I was bugging out 101. Uh, trailers, tow weights, a little thing called tongue weight, which I thought was kind of a weird thing term but it actually is kind of an important thing that's how much you can store and also consider u-hauls it's a great way to move stuff without having a big truck they're covered no one can see it's it's a pretty minimal amount of money you rent it for a day so when you're thinking about storage and you're thinking about off-site you have to consider how are you going to get that off-site food to where it needs to be so the next topic is food selection criteria and uh, Shelby, why don't you start us off with that one? Oh, I'm a big uh, believer in being cost effective. Um, when I first started prepping years and years ago, I was, and this is was the nexus for some of my ideas in my book series, is I had become kind of a couponer. We all remember that television show called Extreme Couponing. You can see it every now and then where somebody walks into a grocery store and gets like $1,000 worth of groceries for like a dollar. <laughs> and that no longer can happen because the grocery industry and the coupon industry has figured that out and has blocked your ability to do that. But I'll tell you what, I go in the grocery store a lot and I come out and my receipt says I've saved 50, 60%. So I I've seen them. I still do it. Uh, I encourage people to do that as much as possible because prepping can save you money. One of the things, the, the hallmarks of the couponing world is to stockpile. And when, when I was doing it pretty extensively years ago, I'm like, why aren't more people who quote unquote stockpile also preppers? You're capturing the value of inexpensive food to save for later, especially non-perishables. Yeah, and I want to give a little bit of a counter viewpoint on this. Not mm -hmm. that I disagree with what you're saying. Also keep in mind, cost cannot be the only factor. Oh, no, not at all. And you're not saying that, no. but I, I don't want people to hear that it's all about couponing and it's all about getting mass quantities of stuff. Nope. There are other considerations. We're going to, we're going to tease this topic out as we, as we go through it, but think about the total cost of something and understand that the food you eat and having food when nobody else does is incredibly valuable and don't try to cheap out. The classic example I always talk about this is somebody will say, usually they go on social media to brag about how much money they save. They go, I got 50 pounds of rice and it was only 62.9 cents a pound making that number up. And what they don't realize is if they would have spent making this number up 75 cents a pound, so it turns out to be nothing really, the difference they could have got them in one or two pound bags. And then when they go to vacuum seal it, which we'll talk about, they lost a bunch of rice. It got messy. They tried to do this in their shed. Now their shed has rice in it. And now their shed has rats in it. All these things that flow from saving a couple cents. So don't just focus on the per unit cost and let that be your only criterion. Absolutely. You have to look at all the other stuff. By the way, we have stood in our kitchen and yes. we have freeze. <laughs> anyway, uh, but here's a good example to the flip side of that. Uh, I remember years and years ago watching the extreme couponing show and this woman had just just shelves and shelves and shelves of feminine products. And she was so proud. Yeah, I got all of this for free and I've had a hysterectomy, so I don't know what I'm going to do with it. No, that's not. That's, that's not a good use of money. That, now you've become true. <laughs> now you, you're mentally ill. That's not a good thing. In all seriousness. But yeah. what I will say, let me give a better example. This last fall, when all the pandemic stuff was in full force, many, many times, Pedialyte, which is a great restorative uh, drink, Gatorade kind of drink when you've had the flu. I found that crazy on sale multiple times. I stocked up on that. Because you'll use it. We'll People use will it. get sick. And, and when you need it, you really need yep. it. And if I don't need it, I can barter with it. So And it keeps pretty well. So that's what I'm talking about. I look for, I take the couponing guides and I look for prepping food. I don't look at, oh, I'm going to go buy it, all of this here because I can't. No, I'm looking for specific, I'm looking for soups. I'm looking for noodles, not gluten-free ones necessarily, but sometimes gluten-free yeah. ones. I'm, I'm not looking for fresh salad on sale. I'm looking for things that will keep for a long time. Another thing about cost to keep in mind, 
so I'm going to contradict myself uh, apparently, but not really, because I say not really, which means I'm not really contradicting myself. But I just said don't cheap out, and money can't be the only thing. Con- the other side of that coin is prepping will always, always save you money when it comes to food. You're not going to go out and buy filet mignon for seventeen dollars a pound. That's not a prepping move, right? It, by definition, when you're as you mentioned, Shelby, locking in the lower price of food, storing it for a while, and now the price goes up. You're always going to save money. And you're so right about bulk buying and all these other things. When you're buying rice in 50-pound bags, and by the way, it should probably be one and two-pound bags. I found that to be a better thing. But anyway, when you're buying a lot of rice, you're going to save money. So that should free up some money in your budget for doing things correctly. We're gonna talk about vacuum sealing and mylar bags in a while, and we're gonna talk about oxygen absorbers and all these things that you can't really skimp on. So understand you're saving money by even engaging in this process. Spend a little money where you need to spend it, but understand, especially if you need to persuade a reluctant spouse, you are saving money. So the next two kind of things I want to hit on here really quick um, are, and I'm, I'm going to kind of whiz through them because we don't need to spend too much time on time on them. Familiar foods. Get those things that are familiar. Don't just don't go out and buy a whole bunch of something that you're not familiar with. You may not like it. You it's may be a, allergic to. You could be allergic to. It may not. It, anyway, variety of foods, though. Don't just get rice and beans. Uh, get a variety of things, things that can blend well together, things that go that you like and for yourself and for others joining your group. Right. And allergies come in on this because uh, we have we have a guy who is just really, really allergic to mushrooms of any kind. So get things, you know, spaghetti sauce without mushrooms and things for other people who may be joining your group uh, for both for the variety of it and for the. Uh, the allergens. Well, and and you're a good example. You're allergic to a lot of things. We specifically prep for those needs that you have. If you are allergic to something, prep for it because for sure, once this thing, once everything collapses here, you think you're going to be able to find, oh my gosh, you're not going to be able to find those specialty foods that you need. So you need to prep for them now. Look for things that are easy to prepare yes Uh, look for things that um, will give you good energy looking for calorie rich also when it comes to energy and the ease of preparing look for things that don't take a lot of energy to prepare prepare. i mean me and my my hallmark is boiling water if i need to boil water and add to it like oatmeal and some other things that's probably okay if i need to go find eggs and I need to go and bake it at 400 degrees for a half an hour. These are all problems with a with a minimal set of utilities. So one of the things that when Glenn and I first got together, and I'm going to throw out a book that I think is really good for this. And I did this as a VBS recently on my, on my uh, Rumble channel. There's a book out there called Meals in a Jar. Great book. Great book. And um, it talks, it, what it is, is how to create a meal that all you have to do is add water. It is um, very dynamic. It's very layered. It's a very full book of how to take freeze dried food, package them for yourself together so that later on all you have to do is add water, which is amazing. And it's not just, look, this cute little jar that you can give as a gift at Christmas. It is, no, this is. That's a prepping book. It's a meal in a jar. Yeah. Security concerns are Big another thing deal. when it comes to ease of preparation. We've alluded to that. Uh, you don't want to spend the time or uh, put off a signature like smoke or light or smells. So you have to think about things that can be done easily, maybe with boiling water in your house. That would be kind of ideal. And I alluded to the other thing when it comes to ease of preparing, and that's additional ingredients. If it takes milk and eggs and oil, that's just three more things that you may not have. And so if you could find something that just took hot water, you'd be way better off. Shelby, what's another thing when it comes to food selection criteria? This is huge. This should actually be, I think, kind of the overriding umbrella yep. over everything that you do. And that is shelf life. Yeah. So, uh, and you can increase the shelf life. We'll talk about this later by how you decide to package it. If I go buy a package of rice at this store, That's not very good packaging. It's enough to get you home and so that you can keep it on yourself for maybe a month or two or a few months. I'm going to seal it. I'm going to do something to it to make it sort of last a lot longer. 
canned foods last a long time. Freeze dried food last even longer. Some decades. Decades for freeze dried food. Uh, kind of decades on canned foods, depending on if they have a pull top or uh, need a can opener. So think about these things. And we'll talk about later, too. Um, those expiration dates that are on especially canned things and some things, those are not always true. I wouldn't even call them guidelines. They're not even rules of thumb, they, but we'll get into that. Yeah, we'll get into that. So think about shelf life, though. In other words, don't um, don't buy something that it, and thinking it'll last for 10 years and it lasts for a year. And don't buy something thinking it'll last for a year when it'll last for like 20 years. And we'll talk about that more. So, But that should be what guides you and what you buy. Another example of layering. Yes. Shelf life is something to layer, some short-term, medium-term, and long-term things. What's the next thing when it Rotation, comes to... Rotation, yeah. and that goes hand-in-hand hand with shelf life. If you know that you're buying something that's only going to last... Here's a good example. Um, I canned, uh, before we got together, I canned a bunch of um, homemade applesauce. Mm-hmm. Uh, homemade canned things in glass jars generally last for three to five years. I know that there's people out there that have tried things for longer than that. I'm only going to go three to five years. That's an FDA guideline that I'm going to stick to. So I knew that uh, we had only a little while longer on that. So I freeze dried my canned applesauce. That just increased the shelf life another two decades. And it's freeze dried applesauce. Kind of, It's kind of like Cheeto apples. They're kind of yummy. So that's, so those are the things you need to consider with that, I want to mention really quick before we jump out a couple more of our great sponsors. Couldn't do the show without them. Couldn't do it without them. Want to give a big, huge shout out because it what it's what fuels our show is Minutemen Coffee. Talk about something we couldn't do the show without. No kidding. Mm-hmm. They have a great blend. It's, uh, it's our signature blend with them called the I Miss America blend. Go to their website, Minute Men Coffee. Again, you can find them on our website. Use the term I Miss America. Check in. You'll get 15% off your order. Another great resource along with what we're talking about today, Backwoods Home Magazine. Great folks over there. You get a quarterly magazine with all kinds of great resources like what we're talking about today on all kinds of things, prepping and homesteading. Uh, use the the term six, not the word, but the digit six off. You'll get six dollars off your subscription. And um, one more quick one, Katie Armor. Yeah, come and take an armor, C-A-T-I. That's what it stands for. Body armor, affordable body armor. There are some lead times, guys. Everybody and their dog is buying body armor right now, which should tell you something. So be patient with them. And they're great. Uh, KDArmor.com. Uh, coupon code for that at uh, 10% off is Grant, as in Grant Matson, the cool guy, super stud hero of 299 Days, very loosely based on me. So, folks, we're going to kind of start winding down as we head into the after show. Want to always uh, remember that so much of what we do is. Um, is prepping and we're prepping for so many things that are going to just continue into 2021 and has one of our founding fathers told us and reminds us benjamin franklin says failing to prepare is preparing to fail folks join us in the after show have a good week you've been listening to prepping 2.0 with authors glenn tate and shelby gallagher all the information you've heard today including all our previous shows is online at prepping 2-0.com Find out more about Glenn's books at 299days.com and Shelby's books at agreatstate.com. Until next time, be smart, be safe, and be prepared.